Hi, I want to share with you one of the interesting modules that I'm taking this semester. It's sex in the media. I know sex and gender are really basic co concepts for us, and even feminism is not a new word. Uh, we talk about it every day on social media. But actually what I'm learning from this module is more than that. This is because gender studies and feminist studies is more than just a single statement saying we are all equal. It's a real field of study in which we produce knowledge, but in the way that we place more emphasis on women's experiences and women's perspectives. So from this module, I do learn some like new perspectives or new feminist lens to look at things, look at societal issues and look at other topics or other themes. For example, one important concept would be hegemonic masculinity. And this is from the reading by Cornell, Hegemonic Masculinity, Rethinking the Concept. So hegemonic masculinity is a set of rules and standards and norms that um, men are expected to behave in a society. For example, they're expected to be strong, to be sporty, to be dominant, to be in the leadership position, and they're expected to assert some kind of dominance over women to show their masculinity. So when most people in the society agree with this set of rules or they take it as default and accept this without noticing it, this hegemonic masculinity will form a system or a hierarchy where those men who are able to showcase those kind of desired masculinity will be on top, will be the superior human being, while men, uh, well, women and other feminine men will be at the bottom, will be inferior. So uh, I think this concept is really inspiring and useful for me when I study other topics and other subjects, because when I, whenever I encounter some gender-related issues, I will know that this thing does not happen in silo. It does not happen by chance. These issues all happen because they stem from this system that is created by hegemonic masculinity. And also by knowing this concept and knowing that there is a set of standards for men and this affects so many things, I will be able to discover and spot a lot of hidden issues that we take it as default or we are so used to. So for example, sports in primary school and secondary school in PE lessons, we play games and we are split into groups. So boys play against boys, girls play against girls. And although we are separate, it's still very obvious for us that the teacher have two sets of different standards for boys and girls. So for example, for boys, he always say like, stand up, fight on, come on, you can do it. You are a boy, act like a man. And for girls, it's always like, Oh, nice try. Great attempt. Yeah, as long as you try, it's okay. That's very good already. It's like, it's so obvious and it's to the point that you know it's not only because of physical difference. It's because the teacher has different expected qualities in boys and girls. For example, the boys are always encouraged to take some physical confrontations. But for girls, the most important thing is be happy and be peaceful. If you want to confront each other, the teacher will say, no, be peaceful. The most important thing is being peaceful and being happy. But for boys, the most important thing is to win the game. And of course, this, this, this set of expectations does not only apply to primary school, secondary school kids. It also applies to real sports games. So for example, I was watching World Cup last month Everyone was watching World Cup last month. And when we talk about it, we all take it as default that it's men's World Cup. And we just, we don't even need to specify it's men, it's by default men. We never thought that this name or this sport can belong to women. And because I do watch football myself, men's football actually, and I do occasionally, occasionally see some posts in the forum saying that there was a really great goal last night by someone in the Women's Super League. You should go and watch it. And there will always be someone saying, no, I don't like it. I don't want to watch it. I don't want, I don't like women's football because it's slower. It's less aggressive. It's less exciting. It's, yeah, I don't like it. So when I see those kind of comments, I would 
what I'm thinking is actually besides just physical difference, people do not like f- female footballers. Is it also because they do not like to see masculine traits to be displayed on a woman who is supposed to be the subordinate of men? And we, we can always we can also see this from some scenarios in which, like we know, a lot of boys take. Male athletes or male footballers as role models, but we don't see the same in girls. Cause at least for me, I don't even know a lot of well-known female footballers. If we talk about female athletes, they're mostly the figure skaters, gymnastic athletes. It's the beautiful kind of sports. So it's it's again the set of standards and set of expectations for both genders. For male athletes, you should play the competitive, violent kind of sport, and for female athletes, you should play the beautiful kind of sport. Yeah, so that's some of my reflection on sport and hegemonic masculinity. Thank you.